Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 11th Planning Board meeting. Present tonight, we have Lou Perrin, member, Bill LePage, member, Steve Wachoba, clerk of the board, Richard Clark, vice chairman, myself, Daniel Edmiston, chairman, also Bill Scanlon, our acting town planner, and Carol Savard, our clerk. Jumping right into things. The minutes from last meeting. If everybody had a chance to look at those, do we have any, uh, any comments, any questions? No, good to me. No. All right. How about a motion then to accept? To make a motion, we accept the minutes of the February 26, 2020 meeting as presented. Is there a second? I'll second it. There is a second. Gentlemen, we have a motion and a second to accept the meeting minutes from the February 26 meeting as submitted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Oh, what? Well, we already started a couple, but that's all right. Okay. Oh, we're coming. And we don't need this one in case you want to hold on to that. I'm not sure oh, right. that was. Item B, we don't have any ANR plans, so move on to number C, discussion status report on finishing the construction of and acceptance of uncompleted, unaccepted subdivision streets. Bill, any, any input on any of these? Uh, not too much this week. Um, for Pierpont Estates, the developer went to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, because, as you know, uh, because of the zoning change to 87,000 square foot lots, uh, and his plan was approved with 43,000 square foot lots. Some of his lots are now non-conforming and not buildable. So he approached the ZBA um, about the possibility of getting some variances for those lots. The ZBA, I think, was a little uh, um, confused as to what he was there for. So I prepared a memo to the ZBA to inform them of what the planning board had, had decided. So. Um, I don't know what's going to happen there, but he's sort of in the middle of trying to figure that out. Okay. Uh, nothing on uh, Rocky Hill Estates or Piasta Road. Uh, Country View Estates, um, there was an agreement to go ahead and, and start working on the sewer pump station. The uh, developer, uh, Dan Haney, has agreed to phase one, which is uh, uh, installing a riser, a concrete riser, and raising the elevation up a couple of feet. Uh, that's going to cost about $3,000, so he's agreed to the use of the escrow of money for that purpose. That should take place next week. Uh, I think, believe the sewer department is going to be out there doing that work. Uh, and they will also, uh, you know, grade the area around the, the chamber to prevent more infiltration into that basin. Okay. Uh, who is it that's going to evaluate that pump, the original pump? Will that be the sewer department? or? Well, they will oversee it. They'll hire somebody. Hiring somebody. Come in and do it. It's a, you know, obviously it's a specialty that mm -hmm. they don't have. So someone, they, there are two pumps in there. Right, and one is original, as I understand. Yes, so. and one is about four years old. So hopefully the newer one is still in good shape. Right. We really have to cross our fingers on the older one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, certainly they, they don't want to accept that road with a bad pump. So they would, they would require that to be replaced if it's in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What? All the monies is coming from the escrow, right? Is he is he contributing? We to this? are uh, taking it step by step. So whenever there's uh, a next phase, we're going to ask him for permission to use the money so my only for that purpose. My only concern is where the escrow is like. There's hardly anything in it. I think there's like what twelve to eighteen thousand, something like that. There's about seventeen, I think. So by the time we take some money out, and if the road's still not accepted where are we at what's left to be finished and what are those costs mm -hmm. we need to know that um, because are we going to have another road that's just not accepted right. in the town right so um the initial estimate for the whole repair was around twenty thousand that was just for the pumps for the pumps correct um, so that may change as we go forward but that was the original estimate in which case the sewer department would have to contribute funds out of its own account and then seek reimbursement from the developer at a later point in time. 
do we know what else has to be done for that subdivision to be accepted by the town? No, when, when they come in for uh, acceptance by town meeting, then we would send the engineer out to okay. do the report and uh, he would evaluate the condition of the road at that time. Okay, hopefully it doesn't take another five years. So the town doesn't have to accept it if it's, you know, no, but if he's not gonna bring it up. taxpayers who are living there are gonna be stuck with a road that's falling apart. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did this all result from him regrading something that, that caused I, this? I've heard that, that the problem with the flooding of the pump station was that he had regraded around that part of the road in order to get another lot in. That's the story that I heard. Um, so so he probably something was he did wrong, I don't understand why the escrow should be depleted to correct his mistake. And like Lou said, then the, then the street falls apart 10 years down the road and, I uh, I mean, certainly there's an incentive for him to, to fix the road so that he can turn it over to the town. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is that he's uh, generally working with us right now yes. to try to help with the pump station. So I think with him working it with us in good faith, we kind of have to... Mm -hmm. Assume that that good faith is going to continue onto the road. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no guarantee, obviously, but he's been helpful so far. So, Great. one step at a time. Tobin Farm Estates, anything? Uh, Mr. Slingo was in today. Uh, as you know, he's hoping to have Tommy Ian accept the road in May. So, there's a number of uh, submittals he needs to bring in as built plans, layout plans, things of that sort. So, he's working on that. He gave me an update in terms of. Um, how it's going and he's hoping to get everything ready in time so hopefully we can get that on the warrant and uh, have, if everything is in order uh, town meeting can accept the road uh, at that point I think as I just mentioned we'd like to have somebody to go out and inspect the road to make sure that it meets the town standards before we actually accept it okay. we're ahead of schedule <laughs> Nothing on the um, item D, final inspections associated with site plans? Um, with the AMP Solar, the, um, the, uh, the company that's doing the construction sent a representative out during a recent rainstorm to try to identify what the source of the flooding was on Mr. Mungin's property. And um, he has determined that it's... Um, uh, you know, groundwater seeping up on Mr. Mungin's property. So he agreed that he would put in a, a curtain drain to try to uh, drain the water off the property and Mr. Mungin seemed to be agreeable to that. So that's the last that I've heard. Uh, they, we had agreed that the company would submit a plan to Graves Engineering for review before the work was done. So since I haven't seen it yet, I assume it's still in process of being prepared. Um, but that's seems to be on the way to some kind of resolution. Good. All right. Anybody in the planning board have anything to comment on for Ernie? For any of, and any of the subdivisions? Say existing? Yeah, just any of the, I mean, we, we're ahead of schedule, so just wanna make sure that we're gonna cover these in, uh, if we have any questions or any the, concerns. Um, last time we talked about uh, Rocky Hill Estates in their escrow, uh, you said you, um, the selectmen have to, um, would you say they'd have to do a, um, what did we say they had to do so to attach the escrows? Oh. Did you put that 81U amendment in here? What, you know, what section? It's under the, um, plate, there's plate E. E, okay, e. so in section E. Urban, uh, section E discussion, PowerPoint, Rocky Hill, Town Council, mm -hmm. stated planning board has no jurisdiction over On the, the third escrow page code. of section E, there's an article that's been prepared by Town Council to accept section, uh, a, a particular provision of section 81U of the subdivision control law, which says that once this law has been accepted by town meeting. The town can expend up to $100,000 of money and that's been submitted as security to make improvements in the subdivision 
uh, in order to complete the work without having to go to town meeting. It requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen in order to authorize that expenditure. So to answer your question, this is going up to town meeting in May. Okay. Once it's approved, if the planning board feels that the work that needs to be done in a subdivision that isn't being done, you could ask the selectmen to appropriate that amount up to $100,000 uh, and then go ahead and make those improvements to the, to the subdivision. So I guess my question, the gears of motion are working? They are. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Since we have a little time, um, the board has discussed numerous times in the past, Pierpont Estates, uh, they're basically working in phase three, I believe, right now. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, phase one has not been completed. Streets have not been accepted. Um, I think the board has asked numerous times, what can we do to start to get the process moving of completing the roads in phase one or to um, force completion of phase one before or, or before we start keep on continuing over to phase three mm -hmm. uh, i don't know if we have an answer for that or not but um well i don't think there's much work left to be done is there in phase one well that makes it all the more glaring that why hasn't it been done right. if there's yeah. not that much to be, to be well, done i think mm -hmm. it falls under the same thing as rocky hill estates uh just is, do we have the authority to not allow any more building permits until he completes right. phase one or phase two and then there's um, concern that I've heard, I, it hasn't been stated, but in different times when developers have been in front of um, us, the comment has been made that if this doesn't go through, he's going to bail out. Going to have low funds. So it leads me to believe that we need to start working now as opposed to All when right. the project is almost complete to try to figure out how to get at least phase one and phase two squared away. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess my question is, is it appropriate at this time for the board to ask for uh, legal counsel to weigh in about can we stop issuing building permits or what powers do we have to get phase one and phase two streets, sidewalks, trees, whatever else has to be, should be complete before we can continue on in phase three. That way, worst case scenario, if we're at the, at the end of the game, all lots are complete and mm -hmm. maybe only phase three isn't complete then street-wise. Sure, if the board would like me to carry that message to uh, the town administrator, I'll see if we can get town This council. is in regard to Pierpont Estate specifically. Is it? Correct, that yes. I understand, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I, not entirely sure I'm uh, on safe ground in saying this, but uh, the developer for Pierpont Estates has been very good in terms of attending meetings and being here when needed. Uh, as opposed to some of the other gentlemen. Agreed. Uh, and as I, f I think was explained earlier, he does have an issue before the Zoning Board of Appeals at this time. Um, I suspect that's probably taking most of his attention. And whether uh, there hopefully is, as you said, suggest just a little bit of work to finish on that f phase one. Um, I don't know if he's, how many irons he can have in the fire at one time. I think it's a great idea um, because you're not, you're not saying we're going to use this power. We just want to see whether or not we have this right. authority. So Okay. And it may be a simple conversation once we have right. an idea. What we can do is if there's only, and I'm just throwing numbers out there, $30,000 worth of work, and I say only, relatively speaking, on phase one, can we have that finished? And then, or can we get that promise mm -hmm. to be done at a certain time as we're working towards other items? So. So I will. Uh, if we can reach out to Mr. Ruda and see what he says, oh, sure, that'd be appreciated. Okay. All right. At this time, we are going to open the public hearing. We actually got a request for. Yeah, that's true. So we don't have to open this first one, do we? We got a request for a continuance. All right. So, so you can vote. To JD and D Construction, uh, the 6,600 square foot building for a contractor yard at 24 Oxford Avenue. We have received the request for continuance to our next planning board meeting, which would be next week, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Am I completely out of order to open the 720 right now? Yes. And to keep it open past the 720? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Uh, so there's 20 is, somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> there is a letter, in, uh, an email that Mr. Ochaki submitted today in section D of your book, binder asking for that. 
continue. Yep, I did see that. Thank just, you. Just for some more information on that, um, for Chestnut Street extension, as you know, he's showing that as the access to that right. proposed project. Uh, so his attorney is working with town council for town meeting article to transfer the to discontinue the road as a town way and uh, transfer it to him for purposes of uh, access to that property. So that's will probably require a public hearing of the planning board in order to uh, uh, discontinue the way and then go to town meeting for a vote to do that. <clears throat> so would that change into a private driveway after or is it? That would be his access, correct. Yeah. So he would, I'm not so sure if, if he would acquire the entire right of way. Probably, I think that would be the intent to acquire that strip of land. So it's parties for the 720 public hearing. Lions of States wanted to come up, get signed in, and get ready. We got about three and a half minutes to wait. A couple other things, Dan, if you yep. want to jump down to planner's plate. We can do that. Sounds good. Um, we have the public hearing for the Causeway Street name change. Okay. There's a letter that is going out that Carol mailed out today, I believe. Yes. Um, to all of the uh, affected parties, notifying them of the, um, of the public hearing and inviting them to attend, um, explaining the reasons why. And in addition, uh, Lisa Berg, the town assessor, prepared um, a very nice table that shows the, the homeowner, the existing address, and the proposed address. Mm -hmm. So that was sent as an attachment. Going. So everybody will have a have notice that their address may or may not change, but at least they'd be informed. Yep. So um, we're, I'm hoping that that they'll come to the hearing next week, so that we can have a. I'm assuming we'll have all of them. Yeah. Yep. Um, we are opening the public hearing for the cell tower at the Congregational Church next week. Okay. Um, Carol, did you put in the? the, the uh, magnetic sign yes that's in after the um, causeway street in your heavy yep so we are uh, with uh, purchasing well with your approval a magnetic sign it's about 10 inches or so that would attach to vehicles which will notify folks that a planning board member or staff is uh, doing an inspection or something uh, in a neighborhood so we just thought it'd be helpful for for staff in particular if we're out doing something and you know somebody's suspicious right. as to what's going on nobody's stalking there's some identification as to to what's happening so there's a currently the conservation commission has um, the signage yep. that we use and also the assessor's office it's a round logo it's very similar to what you see on the highway water sewer vehicles that are permanent these can be attached to go out to do an inspection and then come off and stay in the office the proposal is for more than one or one for each side of the vehicle it's a set of two all right so just getting a set of two mm -hmm. the cost is 119 dollars and 80 cents for the set or for one for the set what a bargain you need to vote on that or yes i would i think so all right gentlemen we can entertain a motion for the magnetic stickers to buy or the required to purchase a set of two for roughly 119 dollars Make a motion that we purchase a set of uh, identification stickers or magnetic stickers, if you will, for the cost of $119 and whatever. And 80 cents. cents. And 80 cents. And 80 cents. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. All right. Ticking down five seconds. And just the, the last item yep. for the planner's plate the Citizens Planner Training Collaborative Workshop has been canceled. Mm -hmm. In case you were planning on going, you'll be the only one there if you show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's part of the coronavirus. Uh, so if when that gets rescheduled, it'll probably be a next year event? That's, a, that's an, annu probably, or an annual yeah, event, right? Probably, yeah, it's an annual event. Okay. If it's rescheduled, I'll let you know. Deal. Thank you. So at 7.20, in a few seconds after, I can open the public hearing. 
a continuation of Lyons Estates, modification of a previously approved 18 lot definitive subdivision plan off Lyons Road. Morning or afternoon, actually. Good, <laughs> good, uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen, members of the board, chairman. Um, my name is David Haynes. I'm the owner of the uh, project. Um, sitting before me um, as well is uh, John Grenier. And he'll introduce himself. He's the engineer on the project. Uh, yeah, we were uh, approached by Mr. Haynes to um, take a look at the subdivision that was previously approved back around 2007. Um, we uh, took the plans and basically brought everything up to today's standards and, and requirements, both um, stormwater re regulations and, and obviously the local regulations. Um, so Lyons Estates, it's 18-lot uh, subdivision, um, which will uh, actually the 18th lot is the existing house that Mr. Haynes currently lives in. Yes. Um, in order to bring everything up to today's standards, we did uh, go out with uh, Jeff Walsh uh, from Graves Engineering. We did some soil testing out on the site. Uh, the biggest change, the biggest change made to the plans was for the drainage, bringing it up to today's standards. So we did some soil testing, uh, looked at the soil types, looked at the depth of seasonal high groundwater. We made appropriate changes to the detention basin. Uh, and everything has a ripple effect. Once you change one thing, everything changes a little bit. So um, we made modifications to the, to the drain, drainage infrastructure. Um, the lot layouts pretty much stayed all the same. There was no change to the, to the, the right of way or um, the, the roadway alignment itself. Um, Mr. Haynes has also submitted the updated plans to conservation that was reviewed by the conservation agent. Um, and, and I had a phone conversation with him about a week and a half ago or so. And uh, he was fine with um, the, the changes to the plans and the, and the drainage and associated things with the, the, the wetlands um, and buffer zones associated with the conservation commission. We also uh, submitted plans to the uh, sewer department. They reviewed uh, the sewer plans. Everything is gonna, each house will have its own individual uh, pump station. Uh, typically E1 is a, is a very popular brand and then everything goes into a common, uh, a common force main that goes up into the existing sewer system. That was reviewed by the sewer department and they've issued a um, a positive, uh, a positive letter to that effect, uh, saying that they are fine with the the sewer infrastructure. Okay. Um, we did uh, submit full uh, revised plans to both the town and to Graves Engineering. Um, there is a comment letter dated March seventh from Graves Engineering, um, and uh, to to review it there were a few labels that um, a few typos a few labels things of that nature um, the one item that uh, Graves Engineering did bring up was uh, for for street trees um, they suggested that these they, we have street trees proposed about every 70 feet yep. uh, and they are within the right-of-way what they suggested um, just to keep any conflicts with utilities water lines electric lines um, to have the street trees placed outside of the 50 foot wide right of way um, just to avoid any conflicts um, and if the it was the board's uh, wish to have those within like a temporary easement outside of the right of way um, and then once the road gets accepted that easement would go away however the board would like to to address that we're fine so temporary easement more towards the owner's property or within the prop yeah within the property the what would be the homeowners yep. to plant the trees mm -hmm. yep. um, and then once the road gets accepted that that easement would go away and that would just be for the placement of, of street trees outside of the right of way so w if that's what the board would like to do we're absolutely fine with that um, and and also to, to summarize um, the drainage design, um, uh, Graves Engineering was 
was was fine with all of our calculations and and uh, computations regarding the drainage depth to ground water uh, and all of our hydrologic calculations so um, I, that like I said the biggest thing um, was regarding the street trees um, other than that I don't think there was anything of any substance that would change anything on the plans um, if if the chairman or any members of the board have any questions we'd we'd love to try to address them and try to move this project forward for Mr. Haynes. Jeff you want to come up real quick and just kind of give us a quick summary this is the record chairman good to see you tonight good to see you as well thank you um, good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, my name is Jeff Walsh. I'm with Graves Engineering. We are the peer reviewer working on behalf of the planning board. Um, Mr. Grenier has summarized my findings very well. Um, bottom line, um, the follow-up review letter that we issued was on March 7th, uh, followed up from the initial review letter issued on January 13th of, of this year. Um, with respect to um, minor drafting type of graph, typographic and so forth there's a handful of comments I don't want to burden the board with them there's, there's 11 comments that speak to that they are clearly just to adjust this line adjust this adjust that basically text and so forth more than anything else um, comment number 16 does speak to the street trees and um, um, the problem that I'm seeing in the number of towns is that um, the desire is to have the street trees not impact um, sidewalks in the years to come as the roots grow, not impact the roads if the roots grow out there. Right. So rather than put street trees in the grass plot between the curb and the sidewalk, preference is generally to put the street trees outside, outside the sidewalk. And more often than not, they end up in the, um, in, in the front yards of the lots. They still qualify as street trees, um, but they're just not out of the right of way in private property. Um, What's the distance where we're talking between the si edge of the sidewalk and the street uh, trees? Offhand, I don't just, remember, just but rough numbers about park. seven, ten feet, something like that, okay. maybe mm -hmm. no more than 12. If I remember correctly, this, we only have a sidewalk on one side of the street, not both. That is correct. So on the other side, we would be closer to the street? Uh, they, the could, seven, they would stay the same, same place. And my rec recommendation on that is because um, in more urbanized areas, we have sewer and water and drainage. Um, the sewer and drainage end up in the street. The water, depending on the community, sometimes it's in the shoulder, sometimes it's in the street. Gas, underground electric is on one side of the street in the shoulder, yep. and gas is on the other side of the street in the shoulder. So if you can picture it, the shoulders are already occupied by electric on day one, mm -hmm. and in some communities you get water main and gas main, so there's three utilities and two shoulders things get pretty tight so the idea is to keep the trees out of that shoulder whether the utilities are being installed now or 20 years 50 years from now so okay. that that's the thinking on it okay uh, and i just point out the pierpont estates uh one of the projects i'm quite familiar with in town rocky hills another one um pierpont estates uh those street trees to the best of my recollection are outside the right of way on the lots Right. They also had trouble up there, I believe, with the uh, ledge. How do we did we, do we do test pits over here for the percolation and everything? Or we did. I observed um, test pits that were um, excavated by Mr. Haynes, um, excavating contractor. Um, Mr. Grenier did the um, soil testing, and I was I'm a soil evaluator as well, yep. and I was there to observe to make sure that we were in agreement on estimated seasonal high water. We only did that testing at the stormwater basin to satisfy. The um, stormwater management requirements. So nope, we didn't have any ledge there. But that was no, no. Is it as suspected any ledges on the in the lots itself? M based on my look, I'm not sure about on the lots on the higher elevations, but but I'd say along the road, I I wouldn't expect to find any any ledge along the way, um, just from my my visual observations walking onto and off the site. Okay. Um, the road doesn't have any significant cuts and fills. It's basically proposed at about existing grade. Okay, excellent. Um, before we get into questions, if you guys don't mind, what I'd like to do is kind of address the waivers that are being asked for. Mm -hmm. um, I think that having a sidewalk and only one side of the street would be one of the waivers. Mm -hmm. I know there's been 
discussion at previous boards the past couple of years about one side versus two sides. Um, how can we guarantee that we're going to hit the sidewalk on the right side of the street where somebody who might need that handicap access is actually going to be? Um, I don't know that we hit any kind of a conclusion on, on the question, but just wanted to ask your opinion on that. Certainly. Um, it's always hard to try to foretell which lot of lots may, may have people who need um, accessible routes. Um, I can tell you that in this type of uh, development, it's most often s just one sidewalk. Um, it may be on, the, if the street runs east-west, it might be on the north side, more, so the sidewalk's more likely to see sun versus shading from the dwelling or from, or from, the, uh, or from trees in the front yard. Um, but but it's, it's very common to be on one side of the street only, and, and as far as trying to hit it correctly for accessibility issues, that's in, almost impossible to forecast. <coughs> Dan, so I have the, the waivers up on screen if you'd like to go through them one by one. Well, just finish, since I went out of order, let's just yeah, check, finish off this one. Sure. Any concerns with having one side of the sidewalk on the street with the extra length of the dead end road pretty much? I mean, I think we're going from the usual 600 to what was it? 1,800 feet or something similar? 1,390. 1,390. 1390. Would the extra length of the road make any difference to that? For me, no, it doesn't. Either way, the traffic volume is extremely low. Um, and it's, 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 not, it's not a feeder type, um, sorry, not, it's not an arterial or a more major street where you'd have, you know, dozens and dozens of lots feeding through, this main, through a main street to um, Lyons Road. Yep. In a case where the traffic loads might get a little higher, at some point, it's, it's worthy of consideration of sidewalks on two sides, but for something like this, a few more house lots, I don't think would make a difference. And then, silly question, just for uh, Bill, maybe more for your help than uh, anybody else's. If we only have sidewalks on one side of the street, in the summer we're good to go as far as, in general, generally speaking, as far as uh, them being free, but in the winter, it's up to the homeowners, the property owners, to be clearing off the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, and our whole plan is kind of shot anyway, right? Well, have inaccessible sidewalks. Yeah, I think it is the homeowner responsibility to keep the sidewalk clear. Um, All right. So that might be possible, so that we could put in the order of conditions, or is that already a, a, in, in the town bylaw? law? What kind of we, a condition would you like to put in? <coughs> that something the, about that the homeowners and the sidewalk side are required. Town it is town bylaw, right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Just checking. Excellent. All right. Start at the top and we'll work our way down. Sure. Cross section. Yeah, section 6A1J, modification of roadway cross section to utilize by two minutes concrete booming instead of Cape Cod boom adjacent to sidewalk on left side of roadway for first 500 feet. Jeff. Do you have sure. If, if you like, I'll, I'll give you, as, as your consultant, I'll give you my opinion and, on each of these and we'll go from there. <clears throat> um, the request is for the first. Oh, a couple hundred feet or so of the road on the left-hand side as one would enter, and that's because the sidewalk is right up against the road instead of being separated by a grass plot. In cases where the sidewalk's against the road, it's better to have more, a more vertical type of curbing, a berm, to better separate vehicles so they, the drivers tend not to go up onto the sidewalk. Yeah. And then as you get farther out onto the site, the grass plots will be available. I'm sorry? How many feet is that? Roughly, I thought it was about 200. Mr. Grenier might have a. I think on the. Um, your idea. So you're talking. For, I you think want it said. A frame. I'm sorry. You want an A frame curb instead of a Cape Cod. It would be either. Bread yeah, frame, the bread loaf. Bread loaf, for lack of a better term, or I believe what was proposed here was a 45 degree type of curve. And how no, far is that, that from the radius of the street? Um, let me get my plans. Right at Lions Road. It's right at Lions Road. It'll, it would be. It would be um, from Lyons Road into the um, into where the the, um, the right of way actually opens up a little bit wider, and they they've got the room there for the sidewalk. And if there was concern about the integrity of, of the intersection, um, Mr. Parent, I suggested you know we could talk about um, vertical granite curb around the radius. That was at our last meeting. Okay, just so that it doesn't go anywhere. Yep. I've seen some pretty bad experiences with the bread loaf. Plows casting it. Okay with that? 
No, it's okay. You, you okay with the way it is? I was just trying to understand it. That yep. He answered the question. Yep. Uh, three, uh, section. Well, the reduction of proposed payment from 26 to 24? I don't have an issue with that. My recommendation would be don't go less than 24, nor go greater than 26. Um, the narrower pavement gives a calming effect, but I've got some experiences with some 22-foot wide roads that aren't bad for about three or 500 feet, but I wouldn't go much longer than that. The board has any questions about these as we go through, please speak up. Next one, the dead end from 600 to 1390. Um, I don't have an issue with that, Mr. Chairman. Um, and that plays into the next one as well, number of lots from 12 to 17. Sorry to combine them together, but it's basically negligible impact with the increase in number of dwelling uh, units proposed, in my opinion. Do we get anything from the fire department slash police department as far as? Not on this, no. Not on this? And I might add, in either case, um, 600 feet or 1,390 feet, um, there is other land that is intended not to be developed so my interpretation of these plans is there's no intention to extend the road to other properties in the future yep. beyond the 1390 beyond the 1390 yep. Yep. all right the number of lots 12 to 17. <clears throat> i'm just going back for a second to increase the length of the dead end street from 600 feet to 1390 feet normally you would have to have a cul-de-sac at the end of i think we have we one do we do there was yes okay so you have a radius cul-de-sac at the end yeah and so you're just moving that down correct yep. okay and just to just to address the board these are the exact same waivers that we put forth before as well we haven't changed it was a different board so that's understandable yeah i just i'm just trying to get an idea for future reference so how how far can you have a street go before it has to have an outlet in other words normally a street can only be so long before it has to have an outlet to another street correct well, that's, that's well in a, theory 601 feet right. <laughs> it's a local, <laughs> it's a local uh, decision right generally planning standards say up to like 20 lots for a single point of entry after that you get a significant amount of uh, traffic and it's better to disperse the traffic through more than one outlet when you get over 20 lots it's kind of the standard planning practice but Again, it's a local decision to make. Okay. Um, Based right. on the size of the lot, the number of houses. Yeah. And, and it also butts Eisenhower, you know, which is the same cul-de-sac, okay. single in. It's, just, it's more than doubling it. That's why I ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The individual wells and proposed lots versus use of public water supply. Uh, in my opinion, as long as they meet the Board of Health requirements, no. yes. So the next one, one hydrant, if I remember correctly, there's only one hydrant shown basically in the center of the? Yeah, I met, I met with the fire chief, um, and, and basically they wanted it in the middle, which I think John mm -hmm. had to on the plan. Any yeah, idea where the nearest one is on Lyons Road? Yeah, it's right across the street from our egress <coughs> from the road. Right. Yep. So, so this language needs to be changed a little bit to, to conform to uh, that new understanding. It's a little different than what was agreed to on April 4th, 2007. Because it says uh, at the intersection of Lyons Road, right, one we've said it's going to go into the middle, more of the middle of Truman Drive. So I just need to tweak this language okay. a little bit for the placement of the hydrant. Okay, for the placement of the hydrant. Due to the length of the dead end street, what's the objection against having one in the cul-de-sac or closer to the cul-de-sac and one in the middle? Is, it, is distances for fire hoses? Is that all? Uh, yeah, for typically. Um, if the fire department, depending on, on, you know, the alignment and how they run their lines, if as long as they can run their lines from a hydrant and be able to access, um, you know, any of the homes yep. for, for any fire protection, um, if there's one at the beginning of the road, then one at the middle, they don't necessarily need one at the very end. You don't have anything for the fire department on this? Yes. We do. The chief is happy with it. He, happy? Had, he huh? asked yep. for this, this placement, actually. I, I was in the office when the chief asked for that. Yep. He mm -hmm. said one was sufficient. They could mm -hmm. go in either direction. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd recommend that um, conditions with respect to my minor comments in this particular issue, uh, that, that before the plans are endorsed, they be revised to show 
the specific location requested by the chief. Okay. It's it's real hard to get the contract to read the conditions <laughs> and not look at the plan and see where the hydrant is. So. It's all conditions. But the condition could be plans prior to plan endorsement, the plan shall be revised to show yep. this would be one of them and anything else that, that the board so desires. Makes sense. Okay. We spoke about the sidewalks briefly. Elimination of the grass plot between curb and sidewalk on the left side that goes back to number one with the sidewalk. That is correct. That is correct. And mm -hmm. in a perfect world, it'd be nice to have the grass plot, but the lot just is configured the way the I'm sorry, the parcel is configured the way the parcel is, and there isn't any more room for a wider right of way. All right. Board, have any questions? On everything or just that? Anything you want. <laughs> Where do you want to start, Mr. Walsh? <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> so on the binder coat, uh, I noticed we got a two-inch binder. Sure. Uh, normally, a binder coat's done with a three-quarter inch stone, correct? And it's More supposed often to be, than not. It's supposed to be laid three times the nominal size. So the binder should be two and a half inches, not two. I would prefer to see two and a half, one and a half, um, which I I prefer not the thicker top courses, and and, and um, the subdivision rules and regs call out two and two. That's that's why the plans show that. But I I'm I'm in the same boat as you. The problem is with the binders, um, they sit longer, and there's a lot more work going on in the subdivision, so it really should be two and a half inches. Do we have the authority to require two and a half inches? You talking binder or where? Binder. Well, I think you know if it's agreeable to the applicant, sure. Yeah, I, I think it should be two and a half and an inch and a half. To be honest, right, I, that's fine either way. We're okay with that. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go two and a half, one and a half. And then the other thing is, uh, Mr. Walsh, is the state's moving to super paved. Mm -hmm. Would you, because this is going to be a town road, would you recommend that on the plans it also calls for super paved? I have. I'm not in a position to recommend for or against SuperPave. I'm sure you have a lot more experience than, than I do. Um, I'm seeing the communities have a reluctance to move toward it on, on the subdivision side. I don't know what the road, you know, town road projects are like. So um, um, I, I apologize, but I don't, just don't have a recommendation one way or the other on that. I know a lot of towns that I do work in, they require SuperPave. I, I'd like to see SuperPave because there's a lot of checks and balances to it. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see that in the spec. Can I ask, uh, you said that you've heard that towns have had a reluctance to move towards that on the subdivision side. Do you have any idea why they were reluctant? I don't have any idea why. Um, some of the contractors, not the contractors that do state work on a regular basis, uh, but the smaller paving operations that don't use super pavers often, um, they're struggling with it a little bit is, is the feedback I'm getting from some of those contractors. Okay. Not to say they can be done, but I have a lot of experience with hot mix and put a lot of it down myself and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But Jeff, is super pave uh, appropriate for a subdivision street or is it intended to be more for a high volume road? That I really don't know, Bill. I, I don't want to speculate. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I know it is a DOT spec. Yep. And the plans call for DOT specs. That's right. Yep. So, um, does, it, does it come down to just different equipment well, needed to do it? Well, different equipment. You got to use an oscillating roller. There's usually two rollers versus one roller. You usually got a breakdown roller. Then you have your intermediate roller, and then you usually have an oscillating roller. But the key is the reason super paved is actually cheaper because uh, you use less liquid. Um, the reason is it keeps its checks and balances. And you have to submit your mix designs, and it ensures that you are using less wrap, which is recycled asphalt. And two is it ensures that your sub base, which is your gravel, is you has the right compaction rate because you know if your sub base doesn't compact right, you're never going to get your density out of your asphalt. That's the whole purpose of super paint, is to make sure that everything works together. So if you put in inferior gravel, and you're not getting your compaction, you're never going to get your uh, density on your buying, on your super pave, which ensure is going to ensure the town gets a quality road that's going to last. 
<coughs> the problem is when they did, um, not to give a lesson on asphalt, but <laughs> <laughs> when you do jobs and you use regular mix designs, technically the state is supposed to send somebody to the plant to test the mix, right? To ensure the right amount of asphalt, uh, yeah. wrap and mixtures go in. This is kind of eliminates that process. And it just protects the town because you know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Consistency. It's consistency, which is correct. The other, and the other thing is when the other mix, you got to pound it. And as you pound the asphalt, uh, you tend to shatter the rock. When you oscillate, you don't. Hmm. So you just lose the integrity. It's about the longevity of the road. The other thing is. So that, I, I'd like to get a resolution on that. Does the board want to? require that and how does the applicant feel about it and what's I want to hear what the applicant feels about it first yeah. I guess he said cheaper <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you get you on cheaper right and then their eyes glossed over <laughs> well, it is cheaper because you're using less liquid. Uh, right I, and you know it, it, I, I don't have a lot of experience with that you, you obviously know a whole lot more than than I do on that so I, I don't have an opinion either either way I, I can't speak if it's cheaper it. and it boats uh, the integrity of the road I mean that sounds like it's, it's a no brick yeah, it's about right. quality I mean we want to build a quality project I mean the, do other members of the board besides Lou you know have an understanding I mean I don't think any of us have the depth of understanding <laughs> that Lou has, even collectively. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 I, but I, I appreciate his comment because it sounds like he's being rather helpful. Because if it, you know, integrity is obviously cost is, is a big, you know, with a project like this as well. Um, I mean, if the board's privy to say it needs to be super paved, you know, for a long term, um, I, as the applicant, I'm okay with that. Um, it's it's really up if you want to put that in to the covenant well if it makes a better road and the applicants for it then I don't really have a problem with it if it's cheaper <laughs> you, 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 you withhold that right it is cheaper. <laughs> right and is there gonna be any trouble finding a contractor who will do well, this as opposed the key to is the key to it is now you just not you can't just use any asphalt plant whoever you're buying the asphalt from has to have a mix design which there's plenty of asphalt plants around here that do have that mix design. Okay. So it's not like the flip side is you might have to try to find a contractor's plant that <coughs> excuse well, me, you, would make sure that you have that. I mean, I'm not sure if it'd be extra difficulty. You just wouldn't hire a driveway guy to pave a road. Right. That's all right, Mr. Walsh? I agreed. <laughs> agreed. I may mean, agree with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to end up hiring a company like, I can't say a company, but there are companies out there that that's what they are designed yeah. to do, and they design the mix and they submit their uh, mix designs to the state. Mm -hmm. There are some smaller companies that do more so driveway and will get into subdivision work, especially smaller subdivisions. They're probably gonna be not capable of doing the super paved mix because they, they're doing the roads and hot they mix just like they do with the driveways, way. whereas the bigger companies that certainly could, could come in and do a job like this, as long as they've got the experience and the equipment to work with the super pave. Do we need a detail for that, Jeff? Is it a separate? It, it should be called out on the, um, I think on the road cross section where the, where the thickness is gonna be revised. I think that's the place to make it very clear that it's super paved and not hot mix. Okay. Any other questions? I do. Yes, all right. <laughs> so the other thing is, um, is on the catch basins, we have bituminous concrete running behind it. I thought last time we were here, we talked about having granite throats behind it. I, it was just Mr. Okay. I mean, I mean uh, that was something that I, yeah. I went back to the engineer to talk about. I just think it's stronger to have granite throats uh, at the catch basins versus asphalt. I've always been a proponent of granite inlets. I, I like it for the hydraulic capacity as well. In the fall, if the grates um, become somewhat blinded with leaf litter, if the throats are constructed correctly, once the, the, the leaves can, some leaves can pass through the throat, and if the throat is clear all the way into the sump, the leaves can fall into the sump. So you might get better catch capacity with a granite inlet stone than you would with, a, um, with, with the, uh, just the bituminous running behind. Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement with that. And then the transition stones on either side would be um, what's called tip down, so the, they don't need to be the chamfered. They just need to be this. Um, kind of 
the, the, the flat face, but they've got an angle other than 90 degrees on the end. So the returns, the, um, this is like granite returns. So yeah. yeah. Down and the asphalt would tie you. And then it, yeah, and then it blends in. That's yeah. how the other subdivision is uh, next to it. They got the granite. Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and the, the important thing about the transition stones is if a, a plow is riding up on the bituminous berm and is approaching a catch basin, it rides up the transition stone, over the headstone, and back down the other side without slamming into the end of the, of the granite stone. Since we're talking about granite, what about uh, granite uh, uh, right at the radius of um, Lions Road? I would not be against that at all. I think it would be more durable than I think the plows would tear up the asphalt. Yep. I know I talked about uh, sloped granite, but if you're already going to do a carry uh, um, a bread loaf uh, that's tied in with the sidewalk, you might as well just carry vertical granite all the way up just to where you stop, right? You mean for the whole length instead of the um, vertical? Not the entire subdivision. So you said, um, what was the one? With what was the one waiver? It the 200 or 500 feet yeah, of the, the curb, the bread loaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, goes, that leads down to the uh, uh, um, Lions Road, right? That is correct. So if that was just done in vertical granite, then we wouldn't have to do the bread loaf, and we'd also have a strong uh, returns at Lions Road. We'd have granite. So if yep. it just carried up and then stopped and then went into uh, asphalt, okay. we would well, it'd be a lot stronger. I, I did if we did granite at the radius to, at Lions Road. Yeah, I'm that's where it's going to get beat up when the plows go yeah. and they and then at the end of the radius that can along the straightaway, you're not really going to have a problem. And there's no driveways along that stretch. But don't you guys want to carry the bread loaf all the way up from there? So, yeah, what I was saying was take the, the granite to the end of the radius and then do, <clears throat> do the bread loaf down down the straightaway yeah. along the sidewalk. I'd be okay with that because that's really not going to get beat up it's a it's a straightaway so the other thing i'm sorry in, in the granite ask questions <laughs> no, <laughs> in the grant the granite would be on both sides granite on both sides both both <laughs> radii are we going to do sloped or are we going to do vertical i would do vertical at the intersection with the labor involved in doing it quicker yeah it, it's, it's so the slope granite edge and gets mashed over mm -hmm. time yeah um, people trucks will drive over and it gets it gets laid back down <coughs> The handi I didn't see the designations for the handicap ramps. I thought they were on the plans. This, but they have to be at the terminal ends, both terminal ends. Okay. So uh, my opinion on handicap landings, they should be done in concrete, the ramp and the landing, not in bituminous. And I don't see on the plans, I don't see the placard for the blind, the blind placard for the uh, car uh, stamped uh, there. I think it should be in the plans. But, uh, okay. I believe the problem with by two, uh, by, with asphalt on con for, uh, to be ADA compliant is over time when that ground moves, that asphalt moves and is no longer ADA compliant. Uh, concrete is way more stable than bituminous concrete, especially at the handicap ramp and landing. So just be at the terminal end of the radius on Lions yeah, at Road. The end, both terminations into the road. So the ramp and the landing should be in concrete. And it should mm -hmm. have the placard should be in the plan. So there's no confusion at time of construction. We're talking two locations there, right? One each other. Two road. locations, this the both ends, both points. Oh, at the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep can't rely on driveway to serve as the accessible ramp to the street. Right. Yeah. So the other question I had, Mr. Walsh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so when they delay the asphalt curb in the um, Cape Cod berm, um, I don't think they're going to be able, since we're going to do the waiver for one, dry, uh, one sidewalk on one side, I don't think they're going to be able to pull those Cape Cod berms through the driveways because those driveway aprons need to be ADA compliant. So at the uh, elevation of the Cape Cod berm, I, don't, I believe they're going to have to be returns on those driveways on that side to make those um, driveway aprons ADA compliant because we can't require a person who lives in the middle of the subdivision to walk all the way up to one end to go down a ramp to go down the sidewalk. They've got to be able, every 
apron has to be compliant so they're accessible no matter where they live. Would mm -hmm. you agree with that? I, first of all, I would agree that I'd rather not see Cape Cod berm pulled through the driveways. It's been done in a number of locations and the cars go over fine. I agree mm -hmm. that it's not compliant. I'm concerned about the driveways being serving as the accessible route. Um, what I've seen in many subdivisions is, is um, they, they you have an intermediate ramp to the road rather than rely on the driveways. Um, you might th think of it as belt and suspenders, but, but then um, one doesn't have to rely on the driveway itself. If a driveway apron were in fact physically ADA compliant between the um, sidewalk and the road, in theory it could serve, um, but it's tough to rely on it. So um, I'm all ears and eyes as to whether or not the board would want are you recommending intermediate ramps? And in, and in, just, I'm trying to talk it out right now, but, but I want to, you know, make sure that if a driveway's picked, it's got to be constructed as such, and then if the homeowner redoes the driveway in the future, it may no longer be ADA compliant, whereas a mid, a mid ramp, if you will, for lack of a better term, won't get redone when a, when a homeowner does his driveway. When you say the mid ramp, we're talking. We have the street driveway apron, and then where the sidewalk crosses that, just that portion there. No, what I'm saying is about mid midway from the cul-de-sac to the oh. entrance right. is another ramp. So far, I, I mean, I haven't seen any application where one considers every every curb cut for a driveway to be an accessible route. You're talking one ramp or multiple one. one. Probably well one. Well, that'd be the about every 600 really, feet. Yeah, the house is don't really start till you're about you know about can you pull back to back to plan about 500 plan? feet True, but sheet. into the subdivision True. same sheet my just my, give my, sheet. my house which is lot 18 is 600 in yeah. from so the first house so if we want so from from say your house midway to the cul-de-sac yep and and did a ramp even midway where the majority of the houses are. well that's what I mean yeah yeah Ian, keeping an eye on the center line of the road so we can try to pick an area where the center line of the road becomes the cross slope of this approach on, of the accessible route and to what? be ADA compliant with the 2% cross slope, I want to pick a, piece, a place on the profile where it's easier to achieve ADA compliance. Do you have a specific recommendation as to whereabouts on the road? I've got to get my plans to look at the profile. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's nine on each side, so. Well, if you're 14, sorry, say, about, about, say about 900, in terms of station vote, say 900. So if possible, we want to approve this tonight, so if you have the questions, let's get them out. Sure. So there's going to be a So station 900 is around a lot five? Um, wait, let me just, somewhere in the middle, no. Yeah, somewhere around lot. There's, yeah, because that's about station 900. Does, does one ramp usually service a one midway ramp, the 600 foot rule, or is it? Yeah, I've, so we double in the road. Yeah, it, you know, well under a thousand feet, closer to the 500 foot area, is, is where I've seen it used. I've seen over 500. Um, but again, the, the throw to this doesn't start until after 500. There's right. no houses the over 500 down. Mm -hmm. The cul-de-sac ends at about station 14. Mm -hmm. Mr. Haynes' dwelling is about at the earlier part, about station three. Um, it's 314, 17, about 850 rough numbers is about the midpoint. And at station 850, the grade of the road is. It's in a vertical curve coming from a steeper section of 4.75% to 2%. So my advice would be somewhere between station 750 and 
Uh, well, station 7 and station 850, somewhere between there. Let me look at You're that. pretty close to a road grade of around 2% or, or 3%, which is not too bad mm. compared to trying to tie one of these into an 8% mm -hmm. road. back to the plan view. There's an opportunity <coughs> pretty much around station 7 plus 50 on one side of the catch basins of the other in front of lots 3 and 14. 3 and f Yeah, so somewhere on somewhere on lot 3 on, on the on the lot 2 side. Yeah, let's see. So that's Station three and four, that's about three hundred. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I'd I'd go closer to this the lot four side. Lot four side? Yeah. Probably somewhere around the property line of lot property four, line. three and four. All right. Um <coughs> trying to find a place where you can avoid driveway, but I see a driveway for lot fourteen across. Uh, yeah, but those aren't set in stone either. The, I mean, we show typical houses, yeah. but w that's not to say someone's not going to come we in. Don't, we don't need to hammer out the intermediate today, but right? We but if we the plans, but yeah. if it's close, if it's close to the, if it's close to the property line between three and four, then most likely you're not going to have a driveway right there. So I, I think we got it to the point there. Okay. At least I understand. If I were being asked to make. Res mm -hmm. Revisions to these planes. I know. I know where to focus my effort now. It's pretty well nailed down. Okay. So I'm going to say one more. One more. <laughs> one, more. <laughs> one more. So my last thing is we're going to tie into Lions Road to the water, right? So does that mean we're going to trench into Lions Road? We're, we're only going to tie in for the fire hydrant. But we're going to. But we're going to trench into Lions Road, correct? Um. Yes. So what I what I'd like to see is we got enough roads that have trenches in them. So at the time of top coat, at the end of the project, when they be, when they're ready to do the top coat, they should mill Lions Road gutter line to gutter line um, at a minimum of 15 feet in length, and gutter line to gutter line, and that should be paved at Lions Road. The problem is uh, I've seen time and time again, and we can see it all over town, is people trench. They pave, it sinks, and the subdivision, and it's, it's uh, the, the asphalt settled an inch lower, a half inch lower. You're talking about when you see those narrow strips yeah. cut into... Okay. So ideally in the city of Worcester, if you do any trenching in the city of Worcester for a two-family or bigger, uh, if you go into the road, they make you mill gutter line to gutter line. And the reason to do that is to preserve the road. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, but how wide would the trench well, be? Well, so if the trench is what? four feet wide, yeah. so what you try to do is you the, either the board could recommend that you do the entrance from the beginning of the entrance to the end of the entrance, or you could say, hey, we're, we're only gonna make you do 15 feet. So you pick your point as long as the trench is in the center of the 15 feet, 15 feet, and you go from 15 feet this way to the length of the road, and then gutter line to gutter line. So this way it's one even patch at the end. It's done settling, and the road's People aren't losing their fillings driving down Lions Road. Yeah. <laughs> Can we paint Lions Road? No speed bump. No speed bump. It's just that. But if you look yeah, on yeah. Oxford Ave, all the trenches they did, they're all yeah. settled. Yeah. And the problem is, you've got to let it sit for a year and come back and mill it. Exactly. Yes. Protect our infrastructure going into that. Yeah, like that. I'd just like to add, too, that with respect to trenches settling, I've seen some communities use push flowable fill. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The old country roads where the road base or below the base is less than standard and it's got material that swells a lot with frost. In the winter time, the trench doesn't go up because it's got flowable fill, it doesn't move. Everything else goes up yeah. and you get, in the winter time you have one of those. So that, I've seen that more than once. And so what, I'm just trying to head off the discussion was eventually going to, or the idea of flowable fill was going to come up. I'd, I'd recommend against it, but that's just my point of view on that. Yeah, I'm not a flowable fill guy. All right, we cut Lou off. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have a <laughs> he asked everything I was going to ask. John, on uh, the minimum upland area, the zoning bylaw requires that to be 
75 percent of the minimum lot size be upland. Correct. So in a 30,000 square foot district, you need 22,500 square feet of upland. So lots 14 and 15 have less than 22,500. So these two lots are not currently buildable under the current uh, dimensional standards of the bylaw. So is that your intent to just not have some approvable lots, or do you? And that's never the intent. Or would no. you like to modify? Uh, I'm sure we could modify some lot lines okay. and, and do a little horse <coughs> trading. Um, on Upland to make sure that we okay. that, that we achieve that. Okay, I wanted to okay. call that to your attention so that okay. we, we could make what, that what lot numbers with those 14, and, 14 15. and 15. All right, so check lots. <coughs> Any other questions, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. You guys agree in agreement with Mill on the Road, or yeah, yeah, do a, a, a 15 foot wide. 15 would be the minimum. Okay. I'll just Lengthwise, the width would be the gutter to gutter. Yeah. Gutter to gutter, 15 feet wide. Inch and a half. Inch and a half top inch coat. Inch and a half. Inch and a half mill. Inch and a half top coat. Okay. And we require we we, uh, we would require tacco as well, which is yeah required. Sorry, I said that was. Last hey, question. that wasn't a question. That was just, so. Are we looking for approval or acceptance of the A and R? Which which way which way are we going here? Uh, well, it's up to the board. If you feel comfortable uh, voting to um, uh, approve the plan, we can do that tonight. Okay. Then I would uh, draft a decision for you uh, to tweak at the next meeting. Well, probably not at the next meeting because it's only a week away, but at the meeting after. So that. we would be voting to approve with the additions and changes as mentioned this evening. Yes. Right. And, and those are the, the sub, uh, I'm sorry, the applicant is in agreement with all of those at this point. Yes, I, I understand it. So, yep. And then and, and we would have a chance to review the decision to uh, you know, make corrections. When the final submission. In order for, right, for the uh, plan to be. Uh, so the, des the decision then would be filed with the uh, town clerk, which triggers a 20-day appeal period. So once that period expires, well, you could endorse the plan if there have been no appeals. Um, mm -hmm. And then he would be able to record that plan and uh, get moving. So if you have any, any uh, conditions you'd like to impose, and I think normally we would... Uh, you know, I would look back at your standard conditions and, and put those in. If you think of anything in particular that uh, you'd like to see, I, I know Lou has mentioned a couple. I'll, I'll make sure that mm -hmm. those get stated as conditions. Um, Who sets the bond rate? We're not doing that yet. Um, they have a. The applicant has the choice of selecting the form of security. Um, yeah, that gets that, done thereafter. That brings to mind another question. How long do you th envision this project taking in terms of an end date? We'd like to, we'd like to get our approval so that we can get started, you know, first of the spring. I, I mean, it's 18 lots. The market's pretty good. But we have to put the full road in first. Right. So there's but a lot I, in of terms, infrastructure. In terms of when you, you know, the end point, if you will. I mean, we have a number of subdivisions that have been going on, if you will, for decades. Yeah, I mean, now. this isn't a big one like a lot of the ones that are in town. Well, some of those aren't all like that big either. But the issues have still been long standing. I, I, I mean, it's, you see it's this 18 lots. 10 years, I mean, 20 years? Hopefully, the locks sell. I right. mean, it's, I understand it's, it. It's really a three year project, okay. according so to our specs. You're not talking the decades that we've experienced with others, then? Not just your attempt. I mean, if we can't this sell this project out in three years, then we're going to be out of business. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then we'll have an unfinished subdivision. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be bonded. I have great roads, too. You know what? It'll, it'll be a beautiful community. It'll be a great addition to Dudley. So if there aren't any more questions, you guys are all good? Just one before I do this. I know that it's not, nothing we can do right now, but I would be remiss in saying that we have continued or had a continuance on this for so many for so long we had people in here from the public who wanted to say something they'd been here two three times 
I noticed at least four or five people. And because we kept on continuing with this, they haven't had a chance to speak at all. Uh, they could have been for this project. They could be against this project. So that's kind of a little bit um, disappointing. And that if the reason we have a public meeting is so we can talk amongst ourselves, but so the public can be here. So um, but there's not much we can do about that, though. I, we've, we've published it as num numerous times. That's correct. We've sent out uh, a That's notice correct. to the abutters. Mm -hmm. We've given them a chance to write in with emails, mm -hmm. phone calls. We've got nothing. So as disappointed it is, as much as we would have liked to hear, hear from people, um, we haven't, and we have to accept that right now. So if there aren't any further questions from the board. So I guess the procedure would be to close the hearing, vote to close the hearing. Yeah, first. we should do that first. Yep. Let's vote to uh, can I accept a motion to close the public hearing for the Lions Estates. I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for Lions Estates. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so what we can do now, gentlemen, is I can, ex looking for, to uh, accept a motion to approve the plan for Lyons Estates, modification of a previously approved 18 lot definitive subdivision plan off of Lyons Road, granting the waivers as listed, with additional conditions of the binder, we're gonna have looking for two and a half and one and a half inch wear coat of the one and a half. We're looking for the super paved mix. We're looking for granite inlet stones at the drains, going from the bread loaf, and then we're looking for granite uh, curbs, vertical granite from the bread loaf asphalt to the radius up to Lyons Road. We're looking for a the, uh, handicap crossings at Lyons Road, both sides. We're looking for those to be in concrete with the, the dot markings. Mm -hmm. We're looking for at the midpoint that was discussed earlier, where the grade of the road, the slope of the road was within the two to three percent, we're looking for a concrete, um, what would you call it, return? I'd call it a, um, uh, accessible, um, a accessible curb cut at roughly the lot line between lot three and lot four. All right. Thank you for that. You, you're welcome. And if I could go back to the, um, the vertical granite curb, mm -hmm. I'd recommend... Um, um, call it out vertical granite curb at the uh, radii, at the, on both radii at the intersection of Lyons Road. Excellent. With to, that amendment to then? To clarify, just the curved portion, not the straight portion. Exactly. So with, with that amendment. And then um, any trenching in Lyons Road, we're looking for a 15 wide strip to be paved or milled from side to side and then uh, after sitting for a year to be properly paved. We're also looking for a um, revision to make sure that every lot has upland of at least 75%. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for a specific location of the fire hydrant as requested location by the fire department. Do I have that motion? And that revised plans be submitted before they're endorsed by the board? As Bill said, exactly. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you for your patience you. and for working with us. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank Jeff, you thanks for all your input too. I appreciate, appreciate your comments, Lou. Thank, thank you. Very helpful. Mr. Walsh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Lou. I always appreciate the input, and I like, <laughs> like to go over these little details. Nope. And, and I might add that um, if there's interest by the board and changing things such as this or anything else in the subdivision rules and regs. I know Bill doesn't want to hear it, but it's always <laughs> worthy of thought because the, the rules and regs, of course, are intended that if anyone wants to come in as a land developer and consider building, these are the rules of the road. And if they say, yeah, but we really like and we really like, it, it would be nice to be able to up these, they update these when you gentlemen and ladies have the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. It's always... Always tough to get that, but at least it doesn't require a town meeting vote. So it's, it's all handled right here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. When do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bill. <laughs> all right. We started out ahead of schedule. We are now severely behind schedule. 
sorry. <laughs> We're making progress. So I'll now open the public hearing. 7.30 is when the time at 8.15 actually is when I'm opening it. Major site plan review application submitted by Peter Bannister to provide a parking area for trucks delivery vehicles. <clears throat> Thanks for your patience and hanging out with us for the last bit. Thank you. It's appreciated. So what do we have on the agenda here, Bill? Well, um, we had originally scheduled the site plan hearing for next week. Okay. Um, Jeff, uh, excuse me, um, Jason Dubois is working on the revisions to the plan that the board had requested, and there's a traffic study in progress as well. So that part of the hearing will continue next week. Uh, for this evening, the building commissioner uh, suggested that Peter come tonight to talk to the board about the uh, specific uh, operator of the parking lot that's being proposed. The zoning bylaw says that accessory parking is allowed in the residential district, but it has to be accessory, obviously, to some principal use. So I think what we're looking for tonight is clarification that this is, in fact, going to be an accessory parking to some other principal use because a standalone parking lot by itself would not be permitted by the zoning bylaw. Okay. And then the, the planning board, I think, can determine whether that meets the standard of the bylaw or not. And uh, so that's, so Peter's here tonight to explain uh, what, his, what his proposed use is for that uh, facility. All right, again, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, did you have any input as far as what the primary use is going to be? Um, a parking lot. So, I, as we just heard, parking lot's not an acceptable right. primary parking use. What's the What's the question? It's going to be a leasing company that that parks cars. Well, maybe we could ask the building commissioner to explain or interpret his understanding of the zoning bylaw. What it is, Peter, you can't have just a parking lot there. You have to have some type of business, and the parking lot's an accessory to that business. Right. That's, that's what they're asking. Like, is it the main building? Is it the back building? How many guys? Um, right now, it's, it's the, the, the main yeah, building. it's the it's the back building now. But um, at the end of August, Enterprise, I asked Enterprise to move out of the main building, and I'm hoping that I can still get this company, even though they did sign a lease with another um, location. I've spent a lot of money and time um, at this point. I'm not going to stop, and I'm still going to try, you know, to keep them as a customer. So your intent would be that they would replace Enterprise in the front part of that building? Correct. Okay. Right now they use the office um, where the driving range was. And this is another leasing firm? Or the car rental is separate. It's not, um, you know, it's, that's why I say it's less traffic. The leasing company, they don't move cars like the rental company, like the driving range. It's going to be, you know, probably a quarter of the movement of automobiles in and out of the parking lot. And I, I talked to Ali, who's the um, traffic engineer, and he said, Pete, there's no, he has no, um, there's no format for a leasing company to do a traffic study. He said, I could do it as a, like a new car dealer. And I'm like, that's probably not even going to be close to what, you know, it's going to be less traffic than there is now. You guys had said you wanted me to spend the uh, 3500 on the company? traffic are study. You, are, you, are you at liberty to divulge the name of the leasing company at this point? Or? Um, well, I don't have them as a customer, so it's not it's like. still speculative. Yeah, they signed with someone else. I'm still going to try and get them, but if I don't get them, I'm going to try and get someone else. So you don't have a business that's going to be moving into that building right um, now? I'm hoping that they're using the back office now, um, but they did tell me because I said before I go and spend another 3,500 on a traffic study, be upfront with me. You know, um, am I wasting my time? And the guy said, "Don't spend the money. We've signed another lease." But at this point, I've spent, you know, almost 35,000. I'm going to spend another 3,500. All right. So the potential leasing firm is in the back building right now 
I give them that office, yes. Okay. And they have the potential to move to the front office and to become the primary use. That's my plan. All right. You know, I needed to do more to get more, um, more money out of the location, you know, to maximize it. Right. It just doesn't work. Um, you know, I'll never complain about the taxes as long as I have enough revenue to offset it. The numbers just don't um, work as well now as I would hope they would if I can get a bigger outfit. I'm just having trouble with the leasing. Well, I'm also wondering, is the back building, is that within that 500 feet of the road area, or is that in the residential area behind there? That's on the commercial side. Yeah, it's within 500 feet. We're still talking in terms of number of spaces with in excess of 500, as I understood. Is that no, it's, it, it won't, it'd be, uh, I think Jay said it would be less than 500. Less than 500. Could be 499. <laughs> it could be 499. He said less than 500. He said uh, something about the parking, the stipulations. I, I think what's kind of blowing my mind here is this whole idea of an accessory use uh, in a residential area and, and having that many vehicles uh, being involved. I just, I'm not quite, I don't think that when these rules were created, to allow this, I don't think that's what they were envisioning when they said it, when they were allowing accessory use in a residential, residential area. I mean, I mean, I may be wrong, but. I mean, even if that's what, not what they planned, it's kind of what the rules are. And I've spent a lot of money because those are the rules. You know, it's, uh, it's not like I spent a couple thousand. I'm, I'm somewhere around 35,000 at this project right now. That's why I said I'm not, even though they signed another lease with someone else, I'm still going to try and I'm going to spend the money and try and somehow get them or get someone else to be a permanent renter. Yeah, I'm just having trouble with what a leasing firm does. I understand Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I understand a car dealership. I'm not understanding what a leasing firm is. You know, like they, they will get cars. They will buy cars. And if you, let's say you have a business and a lot of businesses will lease the automobile because it's easier for them tax wise they write the whole thing off right it's not like you know buy it and take a certain amount off and you know they just write the whole thing off uh, a lot of the cars that they deliver they don't even deliver they'll sit there for a year and they'll just pay the because the companies are that big they'll get so many cars they won't even take delivery of all the cars but they don't move you know it's not like enterprise where they rent like 200 cars out of that location yep. you know they move um you know six eight cars a day you know, they move them to locations, they pick up other cars, they drop them off. It's not... Okay. Are, are there big Amazon vans on that property right now? There's still, I think, like 16 vans that haven't been delivered. Okay. Who owns those vans? Amazon. Amazon owns them. I would... I, I, exactly who owns them, I can't tell you. I think it's, it's part of the... They lease them. I don't know exactly where the legal, you know, who would legally own that vehicle. I, I couldn't tell you. And if it makes a difference, I can find out. Yeah, because I, 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 I think I'm with Dan here. I don't really understand how this business works. It's, it's kind of the same scenario as if you went to a car dealer and leased the car versus buying it. Okay. The leasing company still owns that vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, so, an so Amazon is leasing those vans that are sitting there from a um, leasing company. I believe. That's I couldn't say. Are we talking, going forward, with the leasing company that you're negotiating with mm -hmm. or talking to, are we talking cars, vans, combination cars and vans, some combination it's more, cars, it's vans, more and trucks? cars. Or? Like, they, they specifically went after this one Amazon deal because it was like, uh, you know, Amazon is just... Everywhere. Everywhere and not going anywhere. So... It was like a special purchase they made. You know, they said, you know, they have to take in so many because Amazon is going to open so many warehouses mm -hmm. that you can't just open the warehouses and not have these vans ready. And that's why there's, you know, I don't know if there'll be any vans at the end of the week because they're almost oh, all gone. Large and that's the, I'm sorry, but that, that's the company that you said that now is not going to go with your property, correct? Well, they told me don't move forward. But I said at this point, I'm going to because I've spent so much money. There's no point in not and you know and try and negotiate a better deal. So the Amazon van, the delivery vans that are out on the site right now, those aren't actively in the delivery game. 
those are awaiting delivery to some client who has or has not leased them? Yeah, to Milford or wherever they're going to go to wherever Amazon has their warehouses. Okay. So in the zoning bylaws, do we have a, I'm assuming we don't have a leasing firm or a leasing agency as a exact user. Do we have something close that would well, cover this? I think we would consider that a regular commercial use. That Just a commercial use then, right? Business district. How large an office uh, staff-wise? How many people are we talking about here? Um, I, there's probably like five or six people in the office. I think they, um, because I asked when I couldn't, when Ali said, Pete, there's no actual um, stats on leasing companies. It's not like, you know, like a new car dealer. He said, I can do that. And I'm like, I don't really think that it's anywhere close. You know, so I asked my uncle, I said, you know, what, what did the company do today? And he said, they, they moved six vehicles. They had four trailing vehicles. They dropped the six vehicles off. They moved the drivers to other locations to get other vehicles to drop off at other locations. So when you figure in the office people in, you know, it might be 20 cars a day in and out of the parking lot. You know, like now there's probably, you know, I don't know, 50, 60. When the driving range was busy, there was probably, you know, 80 or 90 cars that would flow in and out without incident. I mean, it, there's never traffic in that area. So, Nelson, as far as this commercial use is concerned, the, yeah, the leasing, are you Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's interesting sitting here. I'm glad I'm here tonight. Because of, of what he's saying, originally it's about parked vehicles and it's an accessory use, especially that backside that's not commercial, it's residential. From what he's saying tonight, I'm saying if that's considered a company, a leasing company, that could only be from there 500 feet back. So really, he can't park any cars to the uh, residential if what he's saying is true tonight. So I think what we need to do is I can't give him, you, or anybody else an answer of what's allowed and what isn't allowed until I know what he's truly doing. And no offense, Peter, you, mm -hmm. you, you got to nail it down. You got to say, this is the business I've got. This isn't the business I got. I'm parking cars. I'm not parking cars. I've got a distribution center because it's going to change drastically what my opinion is because yeah, yeah. that's, that's the biggest reason I wrote that letter because, you know, I can't give an answer to something I don't know what, what, you, what he's doing, and I don't think you guys know what he's doing. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to you. Um, I think he definitely needs to tell you, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And if you don't know what you're going to do, I guess you should wait and move well, all your vans and start over because you got to decide what you're doing, Peter. We, yeah. we, we can't decide for you. But I'm saying if that's a distribution center, and you're not considering those parked cars as an accessory to anything, then you can't go in the back. And if you can go in the back, it's up to this board to decide what's fair for, uh, for accessory. I mean, you're talking whatever, 500, 499, 400 cars. They might say, listen, because of your use, accessory use to that is 10 cars. I don't know, because I don't know what you're doing. Neither do they. Mm -hmm. So we got to kind of get it together. But in the meanwhile, those vans got to go. They can't be there. That's, that's the whole problem. You're putting a horse before the cart. You did it. Don't get mad at anybody. And you keep saying how much money you spent. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have done all this before you spent your money. And I'm not telling you what to do, but I mean, right. Peter, you did it. So, so I guess what I'm saying is I, I want the vans moved, which is why I'm here tonight. And then you can come see them. And once you decide what you're going to do, and then, you know, maybe, maybe it's legit, maybe it isn't. But again, you need to tell them what you're going to do and how you're going to do it before, because right now they can't make a decision more than I can, really. So I'm hearing a couple different issues here. We were talking about this, the, the zoning and the use, mm. the principal use and the accessory use, and now I'm hearing that there's the vehicles shouldn't be on the lot. The vehicles that should be on the lot are they in the residential area or are they in the commercial? Commercial, or is that not the, well, the, the reason 16, they shouldn't be there? The, right? the, the, I guess what's the reason they shouldn't be there? Well. The reason they shouldn't be there is he never did the site plan review and he should have did it before he put him there. You right. can't just put something there so there's and no, then get no, the there's license there's no and the permit. Part. So he has no permit is what I'm saying. So they shouldn't be anywhere, really. So one possibility would be to review the site plan and you know review the drainage and the mitigation and the, the buffering on the adjacent neighborhood 
but then not authorize a specific you know, use or start of construction to build that parking lot until you get clarification of what the actual use will be. And then at that point, you can decide whether that use. Yeah, but with the vehicles can't form. sit there yeah. that entire time. No, I'm, no I'm not saying I'm agreeing with Nelson. Perhaps they should be removed. I'm just saying you could still approve the site plan without allowing construction to start until you get a, a construction of what? Of the so parking lot. Just, just to back up for a second. So if, if I want to put a deck on the back of my house, and if I go to apply for a building permit for the deck, if I'm not paid with my taxes, if I'm up to date, I don't get a permit, correct? Correct. I don't understand that if they we're in violation here, is that the same thing? Should we, should we be considering this even until the cars are off the lot? I, I mean, I think that's a zoning issue. I think until he knows what he's doing as far as a leasing company, I don't think he can't make a decision. There's well, no decision to be made. Just I, I need to get approval that I can put the parking lot before I can go after someone to get a permanent customer. Can we get the cars off the lot first? And then can we discuss the approval? I mean, there's like 16 cars there. I don't think they'll be there for more than a week. I mean, yeah, okay, I'll move the cars if that. I'm makes just a saying difference. that there's violations of violation, and I personally, again, if I can't get a, a building permit to put a deck on the back of my house, if I haven't paid my property taxes or something else, yeah, I mean, all my why taxes are paid. Are we considering doing I mean, I, if, if everything's not, all the ducks aren't in the row? That's just what I'm thinking. I don't see how I can't use that office that they use and have them as a customer right now. I that part I don't get because it's an accessory use. It's because you didn't go for site plan review, so you don't have a permit. It'd be no different if you built the deck and you didn't get a permit. I'd have to tell you to take the deck down. Well, it's the same thing. You, you put the horse before the cut. You okay. didn't get any permits. Next week, we're due to do the site plan review. But you haven't done it yet. So he's saying, like, I, and I'm agreeing with him, you need to get rid of the vehicles. Excuse me, yeah. Mr. Burlingame, if, if I may. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's uh just across the street from there basically you know we got mcgee that's parked mm -hmm. i don't know how many cars there mm -hmm. uh yeah. did they go through a site plan approval for that those cars have been there as long as i've been in i've been here six years and, and uh zoning code says 40a says and bill can attest to this usage if it's been there longer than 10 years there's nothing i can do about it and i believe that's been there longer than 10 years oh, so peter's effectively got grandfather because nobody did the, their their due diligence before Okay. I mean, but I mean, I've that, is, cars that, that seems to be with you. I, I, There's a number of vehicles we, there. We, I, I Bill, and I, spaces, of, Bill I and I talked about that? that particular one. It was brought up. The other thing that was brought up with Bill and I is, is the way the zoning is written, because I didn't like the idea about the accessory, especially back in the residential area. But it also says uh, light commercial vehicles. If it hadn't said that, I think it would have been a no-brainer to me that I would have said, no, it's not allowed back there. But because it says light commercial vehicles, I didn't know what to do. And then it was pointed out, Steve was talking about it, and he's right. Maybe, maybe, but we don't know what the intent was. I'm only a zoning officer, and I can only read what's in the book. Maybe the intent was, say, you're an electrician. You can park your electrical van in your house. Was that the meaning of it? Probably. What should solve that is definitions. Guess what? We don't have any. Right. You know, so... Yeah, I've had cars parked there since I bought the building in 2001. There's been cars parked in that parking lot from What is years the ago. capacity I, I for the existing parking lot right now? How many cars could you park in that existing parking lot? You're talking about some yeah, additional... The, the yeah. commercial part, yeah. Right, right. The commercial part, um, probably 100. And you can fit a lot of cars in that parking lot. 100. You have, do you have room to move these vans to that area until oh definitely until the site plans definitely ready to be reviewed if that's acceptable to Nelson I mean is that a option I mean I would I would hope it would be acceptable you yeah, have you, the keys to these vans actually in your possession no 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 and I don't want to know <laughs> no. in order to move anything it has to be a coordinated effort between it, you it, and whoever has yep. it. Let I me can say ask this if you if you put those 16 this way I'll be okay with but I don't want to see a hundred come back or 200 until this is resolved you know what I mean and, and I, I want to just say you know you made the point you've been parking vehicles there right along but now we were just saying a hundred of them will fit on that commercial area mm -hmm. now you're yeah. talking about accessory use 499 or whatever it was that we just talked about there mm -hmm. you're talking about going from 100 and now you want to put 300 more in the residential area 
and use the accessory use as I mean, the reasoning. I, That's a hell of a jump. I think we should all go and just look at the location. I mean, it's not really like it's more on the commercial and it's not on the residential side, even though that there's a line that says this is residential. I mean, it's not connected to anything residential. It is. If it's so residential, it's, kind of it's residential. It's corner the way that is set up up there. It's no, but Bill, if it's if it's zoned residential, it's residential. You know, is that a residential? Yeah, is that a res 43 back there, Bill? Yeah, 500 res feet. Res 43? 500 feet 30, back there, and it's res residential. Res 30. I think so. Oh, 30. Yeah, res 30. But yes. even yes, you know, I I, I don't want to bust on Nelson because he's great, but he's the one that told me it's it's for all the zones is the parking. You can have an accessory use parking lot. That's exactly what I said. Yes. and I'm repeating that. But Peter, that doesn't mean all the cut. That doesn't mean <laughs> I can 500 500 yeah. cuts. You can tell they could. You could tell them the business. They may tell you you can only have five cars. That's up to them. It's two different, two different things completely, Peter. That doesn't mean I'm, anything. I'm think, I mean, I'm thinking back to a, a few months ago when we had a, a, a gentleman come in here and he had a, a used car oh, business down there on. Uh, yeah, Brandon Road. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Zoom Auto, right? I believe it was. Yes. Yeah, and you know he had a very detailed plan about how many vehicles. I mean, and that was just. That was just a small handful of right. parking lots, and, and this is a much bigger deal that you're talking about. Yeah, but this is what this, you know, there are businesses that have cars that they distribute to people. They have to put the car somewhere. I mean, so why, why not in Dudley? What's Back to a question I think I asked earlier. I'm not sure if the answer was there. I missed it. It is just cars we're talking about. I'm not talking about some mix of cars, vans, and trucks. Just cars. No, they might have some small uh, vans, SUVs. I mean, a lot of people, I think Ford makes now mo more SUVs, and they get rid of most of the small cars. It's not like, I mean, it's whatever is popular, whatever the people want to drive are what the cars are going to be. The vans was just a one-time special, you know, Amazon is growing like crazy. You know, it, and like I said before, before they take over the world, they're going to have to put these vans somewhere. So yours was an overflow lot for Amazon. That's it. Apparently. Okay. And it's not the only one. They're all over. Yeah. You know, now, here you go. Here's your perfect uh, world scare to keep everybody home. Everyone's going to buy I everything over. I think what scares Amazon. us a bit is that, <laughs> and I did see a small segment of something that was on one of the Boston television channels, and apparently there's a, a big hullabaloo going on in the town of Milford. Or the residents are up in arms, and the term, the name that was used was Amazon, and apparently it's caused an incredible amount of congestion and uh, really upset the neighbors and the town itself. So I, you know, when you're talking 500 plus vehicles, it's not too hard to make the leap to that situation going on in Milford and envision something similar going on here, which is well a little not, disquieting. It's not anything to say like. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Like but again, you're looking to negotiate with a leasing firm that right now is telling you not to go forward. So there's another player potentially down the road that we don't know and you don't know and you haven't talked to yet who may not be consistent in its thinking as or have a consistent business plan with the folks that you have been dealing with. So. You know, it's, there's, I think as Mr. Burlingame has suggested, there's a lot of open ends here, of a lot of things that are possible, likely, and maybe, but not very definite. If I'm so let's, overstating that, I apologize. Next week when we come in, we'll make it definite that this is what we're looking to do. Okay. And we'll go from there. I mean, it's, um, like I said, somewhere someone is going to have these vans or cars not, sure. you yeah. know, parked. Um, what's wrong with a leasing company? And the field over here in the back off of West Main Street. I don't think anybody has a problem with it in Dudley. It's zoning issue. Mm -hmm. But zoning says it's an accessible use. I think that's... Yeah, well, what's accessible? I mean, what's accessible? I don't think 500 cars is accessible. Is, yep. is, does he have the option of rezoning that back area? I mean, he could, he could go to town meeting on town warrant, couldn't he? And I, I mean, think that would save him a lot of... I mean, it, like Nelson pointed out to me, it's... You, it can be an accessory use for the in the residential area. Why rezone it? it it's already zoned for it. So, we've been all over the place tonight so far, and a lot of information has gone back and forth. Trying to summarize and kind of put things into priority and see if we're all on the same page or not is. I think the first thing that I personally would like to see would be compliance, is to get those vans, cars, trucks, whatever the heck they are that are non-compliant, get them off the lot. 
That would be the first thing I would I'll, like to I'll see. I'll move them to the commercial side. And then the second thing we need to determine is the, the primary use. If the commercial use would be the umbrella that this would fit under or not. Then we have to decide the accessory use, what limitations does the board want to or what limitations can the board put on that use? Assuming that everything goes according to how you think that we're going to have this commercial use umbrella and we're going to see everything as an accessory use, then the boards is, the, might have to discuss, for example, in a res 30, what is the intention, what are our, our powers potentially limit the amount of cars, if we have those or not. And then I think we would get closer to where we are. It would obviously going to help everybody if we know more about who your end user is going to be, if it's going to be ABZ, leasing company, whatever, just so we have some kind of a input on what they're doing. If they, best world, they'll have, a, they'll have a website that we can go to and find out what they do, how, what kind of cars they have or something that would kind of help quiet our nerves a little bit. Yeah. But I think if we attack these items in these and kind of, in a, you know, let's, let's attack the first things and start to work down towards our goal, um, it might be a little bit more productive. And then um, I don't know if the board wants to actually go out there and walk. I, I think it'd be great if everybody just, even if you drove through the parking lot. Yeah. Well, I want to reiterate and make it clear, because you mentioned it more than once, that an accessory use isn't allowed, an accessory use isn't allowed, but it's allowed to the extent that we, we decide based on what the primary use is, and that's the big thing that you seem to be missing here is that you've come to us and you've well, floated ideas about what I've, you want. I've already asked Enterprise to move out. They're out in August. And this is my end goal is to move that company to the front of that building. And that's, you know, from the back office. All right. So that, that's, I just want to yep, read that's it. My, that's been my goal from the beginning. So when you come back next meeting, you, you come to us and mm -hmm. you, know, you say this is this Regardless, is the plan yep. this is the business we're going to be doing here. so Nelson if we get we those if, if, the, if the vans are off of the residential zoned area and enter the commercial does that put Peter into good compliance yes also okay so Thank that you. would be appreciated that'd Thank be a great you. first step yeah. Mr. Then, Mr. Chairman yes sir could, could I just because I was thinking about it after as, as we were talking about when we talk about the cars across the way that would be less than 500 feet back, so I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm going to guess that would be zone business mm -hmm. 15, which would make it legit, other than I don't know if they ever did a site plan, but I wouldn't really know that, you know what I'm saying? It would have had to have been back right. previously, yeah. but it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, the, big, the big question here, Peter, is the 500 feet and then mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bill, the other Bill, Mr. LePage, asked a question. Could that be rezoned if they went to a town meeting and we got on a warrant that, that back further? Well, it's kind of a spot zoning question, I think, yeah. if you're trying to just yeah. rezone I was, one I'm not sure. property, you know, for his own personal benefit. Well, I, I don't think, like you said, it doesn't have to be rezoned. And if you look at, like, the abutters. Yeah, how far know, does that, that big building next to yours, with that company there, it's got the driveway that goes down in the back there. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know what yeah. they do. There. Yeah, yeah they're, the they're, no, they're, they're within like 500 feet. It's close over there. Maybe some of the might not be, but um, but the neighbors, you know, it, it, the first thing they both said when they got up, you know, besides the one guy that lives across the street and down the road, who um, whoever he was, but, you know, they said, I've been a great neighbor. And, like, I, I'm not going to shine the lights on their houses. I'll put trees up. I'll do whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not looking to like destroy someone's backyard and it and if you go through the parking lot you'll see it's like disconnected it's not like it's that, we th we appreciate that and we understand that you know from what we heard it sounds like you've been a good neighbor yeah i think i can't speak for the whole board but what i'm what i'm worried about is i'm worried about whether or not we're going to set a precedent here down the road for the next person who comes that happens to have a business that is abutted by a large piece of residen residential land that they own mm -hmm. and all of a sudden starts to say to us hey mm -hmm. you know I've been running this business here and now I want to expand and I want to put God knows what over onto this residential property mm -hmm. as an accessory use That's well I mean if if like I, I, I kind of see it like this if the abutters are 
don't think it's that big of a deal. They had a couple small concerns. Maybe whatever that future thing might be, if enough people had enough legitimate complaints, then you'd have to address that situation, which I don't think we have a situation here where it's not a problem. We're not like, uh, I'm not going to destroy some residential neighborhood. It's, that's why I say you should ride through the parking lot. Mr. It, Mr. Chairman, here's what I would caution the board on. Uh, I think this is the best way to put it. He doesn't know exactly what he's going to do. He's, he, we can call it anything we want. There's a bunch of cars there. They'll be okay. Say it's a distribution center. You're envisioning the car's going to be parked there. They're going to be moved twice a year. That's great if that's true. Say he gets a car dealership in there, and they're moving those cars every day, and they're moving 500 cars a day. He's going to say, oh, I got a license to do that. I'm all set. I'd have you to didn't, you didn't really give him a license to do that. Right now he's asking you to give permission to do something, but he's not telling you what he's doing. He needs to tell you what he's doing. But, Peter, I'm, I've told you this f 10 times now. I'm going I'm after a leasing company. That's, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. It's my, it's my number one goal. And if I have to get something else, um, I'll have to come back in front of the board. If it's going to be a strip mall, if I'm going to do a, a car dealer, it's not like I'm going to all of a sudden say, okay, this is going to be a parking lot for a leasing company. And all of a sudden, I'm going to start uh, flipping hamburgers. And it's going to be some sort of a, you know, strip mall or drive-in i'd have to come back here it's not like i i'm not like kind of like uh, wishy-washy about what i'm trying to do i'm telling you i'm going after a leasing company this is my intention i've spent so much money now i'm not going to stop you know so next week when you come you're going to say i'm doing a leasing company the cars are going to sit there they're only going to be moved twice a year or whatever 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 because that's what they really they need to know all that yeah, I mean, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm using the big building. This is an accessory. I'm having X number of cars. I've got X number of people in this business in the new building because other than that, they're not going to know the use and they're not going to know what you're doing. And it isn't fair for them to even to even try to give an answer. So I, mean, I think Bill, I've been pretty clear. Uh, so, Chair. Bill, question for you. When I go in front of a site plan review, I've got a building. They want to put two pizza parlors in it, bagel shop. I've got to make sure that the parking is right for the use i have enough spots i have to make sure that etc cetera, etc cetera. if the owner of the building the leases fall through let's say we approve everything mm -hmm. the leases fall through and now he wants to put a business in there you just can't do that you have to go back in front of the planning board or the, the site plan review and say look plans change we have business in there which has different parking requirements which has different toilet requirements etc cetera, etc cetera. well if this gets approved as a leasing firm as an accessory under the commercial use umbrella and all of a sudden we have delivery vans in there that's in violation then correct well can we put that restriction on this you know this is a major site plan review so you are reviewing the parking lot design and all the associated impacts with that um, it's the building commissioners uh, job to determine whether the use is permitted or not all right. So once the site plan is approved, it becomes a matter of the building commissioner saying, yes, that use is permitted. And if the existing use, you know, leaves and goes elsewhere, and a new use comes in, then it's up to the building commissioner to determine whether that use is permitted. And it might be a special permit, in which case it would come back to the board. But if there's no changes to the site, it, you know, the original site plan approval would stand. All right. Is that what you would agree with? All right, so that's important, I think, for the board to think about in preparation of next week's meeting. Any other questions or any others we want to talk about right now? Or I, I just want to say, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the fact and, and make it clear, Peter, they all have to come up front. We want to get rid of any mm -hmm. violations, so that's yeah. good. I'll, I'll start the calls tomorrow. and. Um, uh, that's appreciated. That's, yeah. that's a good first step. We really do appreciate that. Uh, we also appreciate you coming out tonight. That was, it's a, uh, this back and forth is good, especially considering we're having a meeting next week. It's, I think it's a great prep for it. Yeah. Kind of get us all on the same page, or at least the point in the right direction. And there's a yeah. number of I'm not here. like trying, it's not a smoke and mirrors thing. It's not like, um, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm going after a leasing company. This is it. M it's Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to say it too, because we're on TV. Nobody's against it. And I think Mr. Perrin said it well. 
it's just a zoning issue and we're going to follow what the zoning says i mean nobody's saying it's a good spot it's a bad spot or anything peter nobody's the enemy nobody wants to see you not succeed it's just we're, we're trying to follow the zoning bylaws and i think i want to make that clear on tv because yep. people watch this a lot and yeah it's good no, for I all think, of us i think it's like the perfect definition of an allowable use in a residential area is this is right off a commercial piece of property it is not in someone's neighborhood it's not like I'm going to park uh, 50 cars around my house and because I, I, it says I can, I'm going to. It's not anything like that. This is off. It's, you wouldn't even know it wasn't commercial unless you looked at the map to see that it actually falls over 500 feet. It's, right. it's a commercial piece of property. I think in part a lot of this comes down to a numbers game. You know, if you were saying five additional cars, I don't, or vehicles rather, I, I suspect uh, everybody would just kind of, you know, Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking 500, the number is large, for lack of a better word. You know, it's something that I, of a magnitude that I don't think in Dudley we're typically seeing anything like that. I don't know what McGee has on their property, both locations, but I suspect it might not exceed 500, and they're probably the largest. Uh, it's you know it's kind of keeping that small town sense of small town if you will and then ever 500 see. or something is just uh, yeah. it's, it's just kind of overwhelming if you will i don't think anyone's ever going to see it i mean you can't you when people go by it's 40 miles an hour and you have to look back 500 feet to see these cars that are off in the middle of nowhere 500 cars have to get in there and 500 cars have, have to come out of there absolutely i mean when people go to church how many people show up at church and get in and out and it is no problem i'm telling you the streets of dudley up in that area most of the churches in town would love to have 500 cars in their parking <laughs> yeah, lot but frankly. like i said they when i asked i said how many cars did you move today they moved uh, there was you know 10 drivers that moved six vehicles with four trailing vehicles it's not like but that's, the, but that's the company that's there right now, and we just discussed how. But the leasing companies don't move cars. That's why, like, Enterprise, you guys wouldn't believe it. I mean, they rent, like, 200 cars out of there. There's cars in and out of there all the time, and there is no problems at all. When the, when the driving range was there, when it was busy, springtime, you know, it would be, you know, 50 cars, 60 cars would pull in and out of there in a day. It is not going to be anywhere near those numbers, and there was never anything close to a traffic situation. At any given time, how many cars would Enterprise have on the property? Um, Twenty. They would typically have um, five to fifteen. I've seen thirty-five or forty cars. 15. So effectively, they are going to they occupy an office area. You are going to sell that same office area to somebody else. Yep. So we're trading five to fifteen for five hundred. But it's not going to be more traffic. It's just going to be more cars in the back. Okay. Uh, again, I think it's the number that we're struggling with here in terms of envisioning that these things are going to be This is why I think everyone should come out and do a drive through the parking lot, oh. look in what? the back. Does anyone know what McGee moves out of that lot that they have on a daily basis? Most of them seem to stay there for an extended period of time from what I can tell. But I, I, think, what, I think his scenario, too, I think everybody's getting hung on. 500 cars yeah. in and out all day mm -hmm. it's not the case they're going to be sitting yeah and it, it may never it even be on the number <laughs> it, it might be a hundred cars it may yeah. never be 500 it could be 500 and you brought up a good point about the driving range i mean i don't recall when the driving range was operating i don't ever recall there being a major problem with traffic there no previously so. no i've never seen traffic stopped in front of that building ever unless there was an accident at like somewhere on tough sale or coming into the gas station i have never not one time seen a traffic jam in that and that's it's, i think it's more dangerous coming in and out of the courthouse or you Duncan's. will see traffic <laughs> back up on west main late afternoon like mm. about 3 30 on and it mm. backs up significantly mm -hmm. and never up there buses are out there definitely we right in this area does yeah, right around here yeah I, there's I would never traffic to up the there. board um if you're going to drive through the parking lot you should also drive down eisenhower and look from Eisenhower from somebody's house to the lot so you can see what they're going to envision too if they see 500 okay. cars back there is this, so you get a perspective a from both there. yeah it's a pretty good buffer of trees there. yeah and, and like I said I'll put trees on both sides of the property line I'm not where where does the residential line start 500 feet, feet back from the road from the road oh. yeah who's controlling that oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I can I put it on the zoning. So so this is, um, I believe this is Peter's property. Mm, right. Uh, no, it's. It, I think it's the it. big. Uh, yeah, the, the left. bigger field right there. You see, uh, yeah, right. Oh no, move it back over a little bit. Oh, I see. This is the old driving range. That's the whole driving range okay. right there. Right. I mean, it's there's nothing around it. There's no. And it's so disconnected from West Main Street. So, so, oh, sorry, this thing. So, here's, here's the zoning line. This is oh, Peter's property here, I believe. Yep. So you can see it's 500 feet back. <coughs> Since you have that up right now, the area that's in the res 30 mm -hmm. is shown in the pink. It's basically landlocked right now. Looks like the only way that you could get to that to develop it as a subdivision, residential, would be to use uh, Ms. Bannister's lot, the commercial portion of it, for access, or or nothing, right? Well, somehow come off Eisenhower if you can arrange that. Yeah, the where that. Is, where the, yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is that if we have a piece of landlocked property that is connected to a commercial, commercial. with this you know, adjacent use being planned, would that zoning change be truly a spot zoning change just for the benefit of one person or would it be the benefit of the c community it's an argument that you could make yep. you know <laughs> spot zoning is a rather vague amorphous kind of term uh, it really depends on the specific circumstances uh, you know, now that i see it too i didn't realize that uh, there aren't as many houses affected by that in Eisenhower Drive there? No, I, I guess I thought that whole property was over. Over more. Where yeah. the yeah. trees, yeah. 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 Where the trees begin, Peter? Is that where your property ends? Oh, can we see it with the houses? Um, where we were showing the oh, trees at in. the end of that? If you, yeah, if you, if you go back to the, to like the uh, Google Earth type of picture, um, you can see, you'll see the, the driving range is open. These are the buildings in purple? And the rest of it is. We're looking for like um, trees. Earth. You know, the, yeah. Now, the abutters that we did hear from were all at Eisenhower, I believe, as I recall. There was one across the way, right? One across there there the was way. one guy that lived down the road across the street on West Main Street that um, he's, you know, I, would we have to send out something within 300 feet? He was probably um, 250 feet away. I, I have never seen that guy before. Okay. Make it bigger because I got closer. He was, he was down <laughs> towards the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you can see. That's why I say this is like the perfect scenario for the rules of the of the town bylaws. It's in the it's in the middle of nowhere. But you do have neighbors that are about the property. All right, All right. let's move this thing. Yep. So I think we've kind of talked about this tonight. If it's okay with everybody, can we continue. nip it in the bud and continue next week? Sure. Yeah. Move the vehicles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, so once again, thank you so much, and we'll Very definitely much. be meeting you next week. I'm going to try to get out there on Saturday, so it's okay to oh, drive on, take a look around? Yep, drive out there. I mean, there's cameras there. It's going to come right to my phone, yep. and that's one of the uh, things. It's like there's a lot of security. Yep. Um, but there's cameras everywhere now. All right, I'll try to get out there over the weekend, just take a general peek around. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. I'm hoping we've taken care of all the items in the planner's plate already, <laughs> that we can go to a swift adjournment. Thanks, Nelson. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I don't have any okay. comments thank from you. the audience, I suspect. Well, that's a tough one now to for you. It's like, not easy. Yeah. So we have uh, that continuation for 8 p.m. at the next meeting. Okay. Mr. Bannister. Mm -hmm. um, so get your sleep. We have a long one next week. Mm -hmm. the, um, the public presentation on the Stevens Mill redevelopment has been rescheduled to Monday, March 23rd at 6.30 in this, this room. So Who sends out the group text messages? Is that you? Could you send that out, a reminder, please? Those are great. Your reminders are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's either like, oh, yeah, or it's like, ugh.
<laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make the 23rd. I have to switch a couple things around. I had planned for the 30th, so this has kind of hit me last minute. Uh, that's a joint meeting, isn't it? I believe? Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. a joint board's meeting. Uh, this notice says uh, finance, uh, capital improvement, planning committee, planning board, economic development committee, water sewer commission, and the historical commission. So who Are we good required to have a quorum <laughs> we'll be of this that. board there? <laughs> You're not required we'll to, but if Carol should post it at a planning board meeting in case three members show up. Okay. So All right. we yeah. should, we should Open meeting it. law. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't matter if three don't show, but if three do show, you sh it should be posted. Right. So the March 30th meeting is no longer, there's nothing on March 30th? It's my understanding okay. that there will be a town meeting on March 30th, which will primarily be a single purpose, uh, one, one article meeting, and that would be to authorize the state legislature to enable the town to approve a tax agreement for the Stevens Mill property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not sure the exact language, but essentially it would authorize your state rep, Peter Durant, to file a bill and or to include it in, you know, some other, other bill that would allow that uh, property to be uh, eligible for a tax agreement. What happens if that doesn't pass? If, it, if what doesn't pass, the article? Yeah. Then the, the, leg, the legislature would not be authorized to approve something like that so the town meeting needs to approve the submission of that to the legislature if town meeting doesn't approve it then it doesn't go forward and and, and who's putting this forward the selectmen i would say it'd be the selectmen yes you would say it'd be the selectmen well it's the through selectmen. town administrator through okay. the you know all right so who they, works they're, for the they're proponents of this yes all right another item that we need to consider is we need to schedule a public hearing for the zoning amendment. Um, so we have two meetings in April, April 8th and April. What zoning amendment was that again? The uh, ability for to allow a waiver in the mill conversion overlay district mm -hmm. from the affordable housing requirement. Yeah. That does require a Would that zoning meeting amendment. follow the town meeting? That would be at the annual town meeting. Okay. That article. That article would be on the uh, warrant. It would be one of the articles on the warrant, correct. So we're meeting on April 8th and April 22nd. I could schedule the hearing for April 8th if you would want to do it that night. Uh, we could also do it on the 22nd. Um, I would prefer not the 22nd. Pardon? I would prefer not the 22nd. Okay. April 8th, I guess. Carol, would you be kind enough to send us a revised schedule so that we make sure we're in the right place at the right time? <laughs> <laughs> or an approximation thereof. And so the question is, do we want to have, do we need, is there a need to have a planning board, to planning board to discuss this before we open the, to a public meeting? No. No. We've talked about it a little bit already, you know, informally. Okay. But there's no requirement. So that do it on the 8th? What was it? What the, what I would the options? suggest the 8th, yes, if, you're, if you want to. That's the second, right? The second, the second week, yep. Second Wednesday of yeah, the month. The 8th works better for me than the 22nd. What are your guys' mm -hmm. thoughts? Okay. Yeah, all right. Wide open. Right. It's good. All right. Shoot for the 8th. Okay. Um, we had some invoices, Carol. Are those around the place? They were, they were on top of the folders. Did you come over and find them for me? Do you have sitting there? No, I don't think they were. Did somebody take the invoices? No, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You think I have them here someplace? I got something with these them? Sure. Can we adjourn and then look for them? Well, you need to vote to approve them, I think. Well, let's go on to comments from the board. So, I, 
not sure where they are. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of things that I'd like to mention in terms of uh, comments from the planning board. Okay. One is to acknowledge that uh, our planner, uh, Mr. Johnson, has retired, and uh, I'd like to thank him for his service. Yep. Uh, the second one is a uh, note of appreciation is to Mr. Perrin for his uh, paving 101 course that we were all uh, witness to and uh Did thank you tell you. my wife that <laughs> <laughs> yes mrs perrin he was here educating all of us uh, that's officially on the record i think at this point but thank you very much for that uh i i think we are well served having you here and uh, your expertise comes in very handy thank uh, you. and hopefully uh i think the uh, gentleman here appreciated that as much as we did thank you thank you how is dawn doing good He's hanging in there. Good yeah. spirits. Yeah. I don't think we ever got a card. We got to get a card. And I did send them an email. Personally. We'll get that. It's a good idea. So I have invoices here. One is for an HP printer. One hundred and fifty-nine ninety-nine. I have fourteen ninety-two blueprint copies. I have one ninety-six public hearing legal ad. And I have. $1,194.24 for uh, Graves Engineering. It was a field a visit to witness soil testing, peer review, emails from client. This is all related to Lions Estates. Peer review follow-up, peer review discussion, and mileage. So again, total being $1,194.25. Does the board have any questions? Anybody want to take a look at anything? One on one. Does everyone realize that the 1194 and the 196 come out of yes. the escrow account? Yes. Yep. Good point. Thank you, Carol. Welcome. So, no questions. If everybody's squared away, I can take a motion to accept and to pay the invoices. I'd like to make a motion that we accept and pay invoices as indicated. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you much. Anything else before adjournment? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, that being the case, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we adjourn. I'll second. I have a wonderful motion to adjourn. <laughs> in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody right. opposed. Good night. See you guys next week. Thank you.